Hello there and welcome to the series of videos looking to go through the content of Maths A-Level in the first year. Here we're looking at completing the square and hopefully you can answer then exercises 2C and 2D. So completing the square is a pretty useful tool. It helps us know the shape of the graph and it can also help us solve some equations as well. Now when you've got any term such as x squared plus bx, you can use that to complete the square and what you do is you half the b value to get you a b over 2 and inside a bracket with an x um, you square it and then after that to balance out the fact you've created a b squared over 4 you're going to have to take away b over 2 squared. Let me show you that in an example but the key here is that you take this value of b here and you half it. That's the first important step in completing the square. So when you've got an 8 here like we have here, what we need to do here is open up a set of brackets and write x plus 4, because half of 8 is 4, squared minus 4 squared. So this is what I'm on about here. You half the 8 to make a 4, so it's x plus 4 squared, and then it's take away 4 squared. Now why do we need to take away the 4 squared at the end here? Well let's just expand our brackets and check what we've got. At the moment we've got x plus 4 squared minus 4 squared. So let's expand what we get from this x plus 4 squared. So we get x plus 4 x plus 4. Remember when you square a bracket you're effectively times in the bracket by itself. So in this case here, when you expand this bracket like this, you're going to get x squared times 4x, add 4x, add another 16, and then take away 4 squared. So this reason here is why we're going to be taking away that 4 squared, because when you expand your bracket that you've just squared, or the square that you've created, you've then effectively created an extra 4 squared that you didn't need, so you're going to have to take it away to balance out your algebraic expression. Let's show this in another example and hopefully we can get used to it. So x squared minus 4x, so in this case here it's a minus but that doesn't matter, and it's 4x, so what needs to go first inside that bracket is an x minus 2 squared. And then we need to take away 2 squared, which is 4. Okay, so it doesn't matter that this was a negative in here. We're still going to take it away, taking away minus 2 squared, but that doesn't really matter. It's just 2 squared, which is 4. So this is us completing the square. It's x minus 2 squared minus 4. Okay, and what about x squared plus 12x? We half the 12 and we get a 6. So we put that 6 inside a bracket. And then we take away 6 squared. And we get 36. Okay, so it's a two-step process, really. You half the value that's in front of x, put that inside a bracket, and then subtract that number squared. And if you see here, the first example here, we've got a minus in front of the x. And in the second example here, we've got a plus in front of the x. And either way, we're still going to subtract that square number. It's always a takeaway. Okay, so let's have a look at this one here. x squared plus 8x. So the first step in our procedure is to half the 8 and we get 4 and then we take away 4 squared that's 16 x squared minus 2x so half the 2 and we get a 1 so it should be x minus 1 squared and then expand the brackets square your minus 1 and you get 1 so you take away that 1 okay so these two cases here to here and here to here to here, they are equal expressions. They're exactly the same thing, just written in a different style. And no matter the sign 
on the x term, you always subtract the square value. OK, what about this expression here? Now, we've got a 2 as a common factor of both of them. So that would be the idea first. Take out a factor of 2 out of both of these terms first. And then we do exactly what we've done previously inside the brackets. So we've just got a 2 at the front of the bracket, remember? And it's going to be half the 8 to get a 4, and then take away 4 squared. So that's take away 16. OK, so now what we need to do is just expand those brackets to get the 2 back into play. Don't expand the 2 inside to the bracket, just put it at the front. 2 bracket x plus 4 squared, and then you can times the 2 by the 16 to make minus 32. OK, so another hiccup here. What happens if we've got a minus 3 on the end? We'll ignore it for now, we'll just keep it at the end, and then we'll simplify it at the end. So sort out your x squared plus 4x first, so half the 4, and you get a 2. Take away your 2 squared, and you get a 4, so take away 4. And hang this on at the end, so still take away that minus, take away that 3. And now all you need to do is just simplify this to these two values here. So x plus 2 squared, and then take away 7 will equal 0. OK, and in terms of solving this equation now, what we can do is we can add 7 onto both sides and square root both sides. Remember, here we're going to get a positive or negative. Remember, if a squared equals 4, then a either equals 2 or minus 2. Same thing works here. If x plus 2 squared equals 7, x plus 2 either equals plus root 7 or minus the square root of 7. Take away your 2 onto both sides and you get x equals minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 7. OK, so you can either work this out as a decimal value or you can work this out and just leave it as a third. OK, let's have another go at this then. So we sort out the first two terms first, and then we leave the 4 in there until a little bit later. So half of 6 is 3, so x minus 3 squared. Take away minus 3 squared, and you get take away 9. Add on your 4, and you get 0. So let's simplify what we've got at the back here now. So it's x minus 3 squared minus 5 from simplifying these two expressions here equals 0. And then just like we did before, add both 5 onto both sides, square roots both sides, add on your 3, and you get x equals 3 plus or minus root 5. OK, let's see how this works and compare it to a general form of ax squared plus bx plus c. In this case here, we've got 2 as a common factor of both of these terms here. So I divide through by 2, and in the, the right-hand case here, I divide through by a. Now what we do is we deal with the first two parts of the expression, so the x squared term and the x. First thing we do is we half the 6 and we get a 3, so x plus 3 squared, and then we take away the 3 squared, so take away 9. And we also take away the 5 as well, and that equals 0. So doing this a bit more complicated um, with algebra, first we need to half the b over a, so that's going to be b over 2a squared, and then take away this value squared, so that would be take away b squared over 4a squared. Uh, but you'll have to plus the c over a as well, and that will equal 0. OK, what did we do with this left-hand side first? Well, we simplified the minus 9 and the minus 5 into a minus or into a 14. And then we added it to the other side. In this case here, we're going to add those two algebraic terms onto the other side. So add your b squared over 4a squared and take away your c over a. Group up your terms together, so we're going to get a 
14. And on the right hand side here, it's a bit more difficult. What we're going to need is to create common denominators in our algebraic terms. And in this case here, times top by 4a times the bottom by 4a, and we get 4a squareds on the bottom. And then group the terms by subtracting them. So b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. I can sort of tell where this might be going now. Okay, so we now square root both sides and we need a plus or minus on both of them. So square root both sides and we've got plus or minus. Remember, you can square root the top independently from square rooting the bottom. So the square root of the bottom will be just 2a. And on the left hand side here, we're going to take the 3 onto the side. So minus 3 onto the left, onto the right and subtract the b over 2a onto the right hand side as well. And if we notice here, we've got a denominator here on both of them of 2a. So we can simplify this to x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And what is that? That is the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula comes directly from solving an equation by completing the square. Okay, your turn now. Have a go at these two questions by pausing the video. All right then, so let's have a go at the first question then. So complete the square of the left-hand side here. So I'd leave the one hanging on at the end and I will factorize out a 2. So b squared plus 4x plus 1 like that. So I've just factorized out 2, not of everything, but just the first two terms. The next thing I'll do is I will complete the square inside the bracket. So half the 4 and you get a 2 squared and take away 4 because that's what 2 squared is. But remember we're still with that plus 1 at the end. Now expand the brackets, so we're going to get 2 bracket x plus 2 squared minus 8, and we've still got that plus 1 there. So the answer here is x plus 2 squared minus 7. Okay, so for the next term here, solve by completing the square. So what I'm going to do on this is because I've got an equal zero on one side, I'm going to divide through by five. So x squared plus eight over five x minus two over five equals zero. Now I'm going to complete the square. So half of eight over five, that's four over five. So we've got x plus four over five squared um, then we need to take away 4 over 5 squared. That's take away 16 over 25. And on this back term here, we've got minus 2 over 5. Now, we really would like that in terms of a 25 on its denominator, so we can simplify it with the 16 over 5. So in this case here, I'm going to times top and bottom of this fraction here by 5, so I get a 10 over 25 here. Keep the left hand side the same, so x minus 4 over 5 squared, and take the other two terms onto the right. So it's going to be 26 over 25. Okay, square roots both sides now. Remember, it's going to be a plus or a minus, so x plus 4 over 5 equals the square root of 26 over 5. Remember, I can square root the top and the bottom independently. Oh, but I have missed my plus or minus. When you square root something, it always has a plus or minus. And then take away the 4 over 5 onto the other side, and you get minus 4 over 5, plus or minus, square root 26 over 5. And we can simplify this as we've got 5 on the denominator of both. So it's going to be minus 4, plus or minus, the square root of 26 over 5. And if you were to use the quadratic formula on this, you would get exactly the same answer on that. So we get two answers here. Our two answers are x equals minus 4 plus root 26 over 5. 
and x equals minus 4 minus root 26 over 5. Okay, all right then. So well done for having a go at those two questions. Have more practice on exercise 2c and 2d. Uh, make sure you can do this in your familiar uh, particularly with these more difficult ones here. Do have lots of practice at this style here. It's a classic question that will come up later to do with um, solving and modelling quadratic equations in real life contexts. Okay, thanks for watching.